Hi there and welcome to the Planet Zoo Every Animal Franchise Zoo. I'm back in the Franchise Zoo after a little break to look at the new tropical park animals and do some work on those. It's been nice to get back into the Franchise Zoo and get a little closer to that goal of squeezing every species into this zoo. Today's episode includes some of those new animals because I have backtracked a little bit to cover the ones that would have been included if the pack had released at some earlier point. So the Asian water monitor, the sloth, and I've managed to squeeze the lagerbin into a previous enclosure we made because they get an interspecies bonus for that one. Anyway, it was mentioned in the comments that you'd like to see an overview of where the zoo is up to every episode. Because I'm in the zoo all the time, I guess I forget that you might not get an idea of how much it's growing, so here it is. It certainly is growing. I'd estimate at this point we're about one third full of the total space of the zoo, so confident we're definitely going to have enough room to fit all of the animals in. We filled in right to the corner at this edge of the zoo, so not many more animals will fit in here before that's completely full. The other edge here, I'm saving this space to add another guest spawner in at some point. I think we could definitely benefit from dispersing the crowds a little bit all coming out of the front gate that we've got at the moment. Something else near the front that I'm quite excited to share, I've redone one of the habitats. Let me introduce the newly renovated Aardvark and Meerkat habitat. So the dreary, uninspiring breeze block space is gone, and in its place we've got this lovely new themed habitat with a lot more care and attention put into the little details. The old habitat was intentionally quite bare because we'd only just opened the zoo and finances were very tough to manage at that point. But now that the money isn't such an issue, I wanted to at least go back and redo this one. It was starting to stand out against all of the other quite detailed habitats that we're doing. Much happier with this one in its place. I've also added some more food shops at the back here in the same theming. Guests are now using this little back road I put in a few weeks ago quite a lot and they were getting hungry and thirsty on the way trekking up towards the Lima enclosure. So it is quite popular and something that was needed as soon as I opened this road up. Anyway, let me show you what I'll be adding today. The next species up in the order of the alphabet is the Egyptian fruit bat. But before we get onto the fruit bat, there's some new animals that were added in the tropical pack when it landed last week. And some of those come before the Egyptian fruit bat in the order of the alphabet on the Zoopedia. I'm sticking to the rules I put in place when I started the Every Animal Franchise Zoo. We're going in alphabetical order from the Zoopedia. And this is a long term series, so there is going to be DLC packs dropping whilst we're still working in this zoo. So that occasionally means going back. For this one, the first one we need to add is the Asian water monitor. Just two monitors needed for the minimum social needs, so not too bad, quite an easy enclosure to make. However, my thinking is, whilst we're doing the monitors, why not try and make a dual space and add the walkthrough enclosure animal that came with the tropical pack as well? That's the brown-throated sloth. I'm thinking, let's do something that can house them both. So, a dual space for the brown-throated sloth and the Asian water monitor. They both hail from tropical regions, but they're not from the same continent, so it does put a little bit of a spanner in the works when it comes to theming. So I can't go too heavily into anything that's South American themed for the sloth or go too Asian themed for the water monitor. Instead, my idea was to create a more uniform space, so I'm creating a modern tropical house. We'll admit it took me quite a while to figure out what I wanted to do with this. I looked at some reference material, but nothing was standing out as what would fit in this zoo in particular. Everything that I checked on, it was either really dull and boring, or it was way too complex and groundbreaking architectural type stuff, which I didn't think that would fit in either. It's way too complex to put in at the front of the zoo here and detract all the attention away from the main road. So I spent quite a while just looking at different pieces and what I thought could fit in well here. For example, I knew that I wanted this building to be curved on one edge. I wanted the water feature inside to be going right up to the edge of the glass and then giving this lovely view in with the sunshine pouring through into the water. It achieves a much better effect in that way if you've got a curved edge, I think. Inside the building, for the Asian water monitor section particularly, I had fun and games getting the little path in there. 
There's two bridges go across the water feature. Now, the water monitors, the name might imply, yes, they do need a lot of water. I think about 70% of their enclosure has water requirements. So it's really a given that that's going to be one of the main features that guests want to look at. The way I've shaped the habitat and how I've put the pathing in with it being quite low to the water's edge, it almost makes this into a walkthrough habitat, placing a custom habitat fencing around and making sure that the monitors can't escape at all, particularly with the path in the way it goes over the water in the two places. Something that certainly works in my favour for this is the fact that the water monitors are really small animals in comparison to the jumping animals and the climbing animals, so putting in a low fencing around the whole of this enclosure is perfectly fine. There's no possibility of the monitors escaping and guests would be really hard pushed to get a bad view at any point in this enclosure. Something quite fun to play around with. I do enjoy playing around with the mechanics of the buildings. So I got to play around with the air conditioning unit again. I used this technique when I created the Arctic Fox and Arctic Wolf enclosure a couple of months ago. This is where you can use the air conditioning unit that was introduced in the conservation pack and you can put in a cooler or a heater in there in the vent and it functions the same way it would if you have this on the ground. So just a little nod there to the fact that this is a tropical house and realistically it would have some kind of ventilation system in the roofing, keeping the temperature up for the building. In terms of terrain, the water monitors are quite fond of soil, sand and rock work. And in terms of the building layout here, it definitely felt like that fitted in really well. For plants, the Asian monitors are really good in that regard as well. They like quite a moderate amount of planting. I was able to put enough in that it felt like the space was full and it gave it that tropical ambience. There's nothing worse than you have an enclosure that's really sparse for plants because the animals don't like it. So let me show you around the completed tropical house. A nice size building here, not too big, not too small. And it's a good mixture of glass, plaster and some wood pieces in there. There's three entrances that take you into the water monitor section and this brings you onto the path that leads you right around the water monitor enclosure itself. So yeah, the way I've put this together, you'd be hard pressed to know this was an actual habitat and not a walkthrough habitat. The lack of habitat walkthrough gates gives it away, I guess. But yeah, I'm quite pleased with how it turned out with the path in and it's so open and airy and you don't get a bad view in this habitat anywhere that you're standing at all. There's a lot going on in here and it's nice that the monitors, they really don't need a lot of room. So even with all the path in all over the place, it hasn't affected their navigable area. So they've still in the green for both water and land area for here. About the only thing you do have to be careful with is making sure that the rocks you place inside the habitat are quite low so they can get over them. They really can't climb very high at all. Oh yeah, and one of my favorite features, the air conditioning unit. <laughs> You'd think I'd be proud of the rock work or something, but no, it's air conditioning for me all the way. Right, so yep, that's the Asian water monitors. Let me show you the sloth enclosure. So right down at the back here, the sloths are blended in quite well, actually. I've added a glass barrier in here for some realism. You probably wouldn't have this open for guests to walk and touch the slots or something like that. Aside from that, it's been kept quite simple in here. So I've added some more of the tropical plants, make it blend in with that monitor habitat next door. There's also two separate entrances for the sloth enclosure. So you can get to it from the inside, but you can also get to this from the outside as well. Something else, I had a bit of a play around and put in a mural on the wall here because this was an empty wall. So we've got a bit of display here on the outside of the building showing you the water monitors that are inside. A nice addition to the zoo this one and I'm quite pleased with how the building turned out in itself. Nice and open, all that glass creating a great view inside and out. Anyway, that's the tropical house done. Shall we see what's up next? Egyptian fruit bats. That's another walkthrough enclosure. As per usual for exhibit species, I'll create something and then jump cut back to that when it's done. In the meantime, the next habitat species is the emu. Just two emus needed for the social needs, which is good. Emus also get an interspecies bonus with a couple of animals. Now for this, I'm going to be housing them with the wallabies. 
nothing against the red kangaroo, but the red kangaroo also gets an interspecies bonus with the koala. And the koala doesn't share that bonus with the emu, so we may as well split it into what can be shared with each group equally. In terms of where we're going to put this enclosure, now we have literally just moved back to the start and been filling in this space on the left. But because the emu and the wallaby are Australian creatures, I feel like they deserve to go back up to this space, which is kind of becoming the Australian area of the zoo. So emu and wallaby enclosure. A nice size for this one, if you're keeping with the minimum numbers for each of those animals that they need for their social groups. Wallabies in particular, they can live in big social groups, but that means making a huge enclosure and with the Every Animal Zoo, I've got to be really careful with the numbers of animals in the zoo because every animal I add is going to add to the lag. So going with just one pair that's a breeding pair, the wallabies are happy with that. They're not going to get upset that there's not enough animals in the group. So yeah, in terms of realism, it does look a little weird. I'm used to seeing wallabies in zoos in groups of like 30 or 40 of them. Something else, unfortunately, we weren't able to make this into a walkthrough enclosure because of the emus. If we put the wallabies in on their own, then yeah, definitely there's certainly walkthrough enclosures in real life with wallabies. But honestly, in terms of playing this as a game, now the only walkthrough enclosure I've put in so far is the lemurs and... I'll be honest, I'm having nothing but trouble with the lemurs in this zoo. Even though they're a confident species with humans, they're having lots of issues with getting stressed out because there's so many visitors want to go through the only walkthrough enclosure in the zoo. I'm also having issues with guests throwing litter in there. I mean, I've put up the sign saying don't feed the animals in there, but I still get litter on the floor. I was debating, well, could I put in a litter bin? But then the animals are just going to go through the litter bin and eat out of it anyway, aren't they? So it is causing me a lot of issues. The animals are not happy. The guests, well, I guess they're happy, but... Honestly, I'm half debating whether I'm going to convert the Lima habitat into a non-walkthrough one just to stop the issues that I'm getting with that. But that's another story for another date. Back to the emus and wallabies here. So this is the combined emu and wallaby enclosure. It's a grassland and temperate biome, but I've tried to keep with some of the theme and we did for some of the other Australian habitats here. So it's nice and light stained wood effect around the place, some plaster in here or there. The wallabies can be quite naughty. There's an incredible jump on them there. So we've got a big drop down from the guest barrier to make sure they don't jump over it and escape. This just means I was able to have a low fence for the guests to view the animals from rather than a three foot fence, which the wallabies would need not to jump over. The hard shelter in here, this is one I've stolen from the previous African grassland habitats we've made for this series. I don't see the need for creating something unique for every enclosure when the ones we've had previous will do. I think it looks perfectly fine in here. There is a custom retaining wall I've put in here. That's to break the space up a little bit. Sometimes putting the man-made structures like a retaining wall, it just looks better than putting in natural rock work everywhere. Plus, I'm not very good at doing rock work, so I do avoid that when I can. That's essentially everything for this one. Nice, easy, simple enclosure again. I think it fits in with the general theme around this area and no major problems when I was building it. So let's go and take a look at the Egyptian fruit bats that are in now. So quick flyover to the start of the zoo again. And right here next to that tropical house that we just put in. Over the road from there, we've got a couple of new buildings. Up first is the bat house. This is a glass fronted building and when you go through the entrance there you're straight into well this is another information point we haven't put one of those in for a while so i thought it would be nice to put one on here there's also some more education boards here honestly that's just because i couldn't think what else to put in this space for the bat enclosure itself i've got a viewing point for this where you don't have to walk through the bats to see them doesn't do anything in game but thought i'd put that in there for realism through into the actual bat enclosure there's some exhibition boxes here in case we find a species that likes caves because for the walkthrough bit i've definitely made this into a little cave structure here for them ideally you'd want it to be dark in here for the full effect but alas we're playing in franchise mode and i can't control the time of day so guess we're looking at this in the daytime 
I like with the walkthrough exhibit boxes to try and make it look a little less boxy. So we've got different levels for the rocks and I've taken out all of the structure for this one. So getting rid of all the panels on the sides of the exhibit box and stuff like that. Not getting too many guests venturing over to this side of the zoo yet. To be expected when something's just opened. Plus guests are unhealthily obsessed with the lemurs at the moment. So I'm going to have to do something about that to get them to move about a bit more. So yeah, I mean, sometimes guests will come in to use the information desk. Like, like now actually. There we go. Yeah. No interest in the bats, I just want to get some info for whatever. Shame really, since is right there. Hey ho, can't force them can I? I mean, that said, the tropical house was pretty empty when we visited that before and the numbers seem to be picking up in there a little bit. I think it is a bit more popular than it was a couple of days ago. Anyway, next door to the bat house, I've also added a new facility. We've got another restaurant here because when they do venture over here, guests are certainly going to be complaining that they're hungry and thirsty and whatnot. So this is an upstairs booth eating area. A couple of guests enjoying it already. That's if she takes a bite. Oh, there you go. They do eat a bit weird, don't they? That ah, must have been done. <laughs> so that's the restaurant. Downstairs from here, there's more facilities, although less than I've put in before. So two drinks counters and one food counter here. I've noticed the guests seem to want drinks counters more than they want food. Then behind this door, we've got even more toilets because they always need the bathroom. Always overestimate the number of bathrooms you need in your zoo. Saves yourself the headache later on. Something else to take a quick look at, I've managed to add the Law Gibbon to the existing Siamang and Orangutan habitat. All three of these species get interspecies enrichment with each other, so it feels like a wasted opportunity not to put them in here. The space needed adapting just a tad to accommodate for their needs, so that meant expanding out a bit. I managed to squeeze them in by deleting a redundant path at the back here and using this space for anti-space for the enclosure basically so yeah the enclosures on the other side are still accessible with a little bit of path there but apart from that just moving this out a little bit means that all three of these species are happy together very little else needs a changing with the law given in that's 74 species in total in the zoo now that means we're about 10 animals away from being at the halfway mark now join me next time when i try and push through to that halfway point thanks for watching i'll catch you in the next one